it's taking me this long to process it and to talk about it because I couldn't actually feel anything but what I saw was long fingers poor long fingers the fingers were twice as long as mine you know I guess I could, I could see that for just a second or two you see they were like long brown wrinkly fingers I could see them pushing down their hand because I could see my stomach stomach moving up and down I had to check it out twice so I went to the doctor as well to take another test and he confirmed yeah you're pregnant <laughs> If they're benevolent beings, did they talk about why some people are experiencing abductions? Is there a hybridization program going on? I can only speak for myself. They have never harmed me in any way. I've had an experience where they, uh, where I was, it, it had something to do with the hybridization. Absolutely. So they have programs, programs, or you know, with hybridization. So I, I had an experience with that. Uh, that never scared me at all. I know there are people out there having frightful experiences with this, but uh, as I understood as and I asked them, and what they told me is that beforehand, before I came here, we uh, agreed to this. We agreed that this would happen in my lifespan. And uh, as it did happen, I remember that. So I didn't have any fear of the experience at all, but I can understand that people have them. But they said that it has something to do with with our own fear. And the more we don't know or the more we haven't informed ourselves about it and it just suddenly then happens and you're not prepared, the, the body can have, the body will automatically have a fear response to the experience. And it depends on, you know, where you're at, and I know that there uh, is not to diminish the, the fearful experience people have had, but I can only speak for myself. I never had that. I have also been a part of the hybridization pro pro program and had experienced that, but never had any. I wasn't afraid of that. And it's like I, I immediately understood in a way that I was uh, complying to it. It was a part of what was going to happen. It was a, an agreement that I did with them before I came here into this incarnation. It's taking me this long to process it and to talk about it. But then I decided to start talking about it, you know, because I heard other people also talking about these kind of experiences. I said, well, yeah, maybe it's time for me to, 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 to talk about the experience I had. So what happened was this, it happened kind of like in the same uh, in the same way as I had with the, the healing experience, the same entrance, the same feeling, you know, um, you know, the same thing, uh, the same energy, could feel the same energy, losing, you know, all mobility of my body, couldn't feel my physical body, just my eyes moving. But prior to that, it's, it's important to, to let you guys know that I was living in a relationship, but the relationship ended. So I was single but I still lived in the same apartment as my boyfriend, but we didn't have any interaction with each other. We were just friends. Uh, nothing happened that could cause this situation at all. And, and there was this one evening I went to bed and I could sense the same energy in the room thinking, okay, I can, I can relate to this. I know this experience and I know what's going to go, going to happen right now. They are coming back and visiting me because I felt I, I lost all the feeling in my body. I couldn't move anything. Could, as I said before, I could only move my eyes. I was awake and aware, uh, only moving my eyes and said, okay, here we go. They're coming back. What's going to happen now? You know? And, but again, beforehand, that experience and going back again, because what happened prior to that was that I found out that I was pregnant. And you can imagine that it was crazy because I knew I had had any, nothing to do with my boyfriend. 
So I had a feeling that I was cra- uh, pregnant. So I had my home test, my pregnancy test. And lo and behold, I was pregnant. And you can imagine me thinking, what's going on? This can't happen. And it was kind of like, uh, it was uh, it was mind-blowing, really confusing and mind-blowing that how can I, you know, I haven't had any to do with him. I was just sleeping by myself. And I had to check it out twice. So I went to the doctor as well to take another test. And he confirmed, yeah, you're pregnant. And I was like, okay, I have to come to terms that I am. Checked it twice. I'm pregnant. Didn't know what to do about it. So I contemplated that, worrying and thinking, you know, you know, how to explain that to yourself? How to, how to explain that at all? Well, no explanations, right? And how long, how many months had it been since you had physical contact with your ex-boyfriend? Probably about a year, if not more. It was a long time until we find another place to live. And because we, we were doing well as friends, just living together. Yeah. So it's crazy. Uh, I hadn't been with any anyone else either. So uh, that was crazy. And I felt... This is, this is the weirdest thing. You can imagine what's going on on your mind then with all this happening. So I had that, contemplating that, wondering by myself. And that's when, and then after that, the new contact experience happened, which I just told you about. The same thing, same mentoring, and same feeling, the same, everything. And I didn't connect that at all to my pregnancy, not at all. Didn't think of it. I just thought that, okay, here we go. I am they are coming to visit me again. What's going to happen this time? And I had this experience before, so I wasn't scared. I was just noticing, okay, it's happening again. And so I was just lying there waiting. But the same thing happened. I had the covers on. I was, you know, naked under, and they just pulled the covers off again. And I didn't say anything about it because they knew. They knew. I, I knew that they respected me and they knew what I thought about it. And then again, they stopped, you know, right above and under or under my navel. So I could see my own navel and the skin under there, then my stomach under there. And I said, what's going to, going to happen now? And what I saw, because I couldn't actually feel anything, but what I saw was long fingers, four long fingers. The fingers were twice as long as mine, you know. I could, I, could, I could see that for just a second or two. You could see they were like long, brown, wrinkly fingers. And, and I could not feel anything, but I, I automatically looked down to my navel area and I could see the fingerprints show up on my skin. I couldn't feel anything. I saw the long fingerprints showing up. As you, you see, if, if you squeeze yourself hard enough, you can see the fingerprints, right? that I could see them on my stomach. And I said, what are they doing? I I couldn't, I couldn't, still couldn't connect to what, that I was pregnant and everything, but that's what I saw. And I could see that, that they, I could see them pushing down their hand. It's one hand pushing down the hand to my stomach because I could see my stomach, stomach moving up and down, seeing the fingerprints when they, you know, left, when they raised their hand. Then I could see the fingerprints. It was weird. It was just weird. It was just weird. I was just looking at this. And I could for sure know that they were doing something you know, below my navel area. Absolutely. And they kept about it, you know, a couple of three, four times pushing, you know, pushing and doing something down there. And then after that, I could sense again, my feeling in my whole entire body coming back, tingling, this tingling feeling. I said, okay, now they are, they are leaving, they have left, and now I'm coming back. The feeling in my body is coming back. Still not connecting this to the to pregnancy. That night I was so full of energy, I could not sleep at all. I was like drinking like pots and pots of coffee because I, di- I didn't, and I hadn't drink, drank any water as well. I haven't, didn't, didn't drink coffee and water that night. So I was just so full of energy and I was running around the whole apartment, you know, ooh, like this 
I was so full of energy. I couldn't just stop. And what happened was that I, I just kept on going to the toilet all night. You know, the, all the water that came out of me, it just didn't stop. Just kept, kept on coming and coming and come all night. I, I, I kept on going that all night. And it's like, well, this is weird. Has I not had any water at all? Nothing. And where does all this water come from? It just wouldn't stop. Just kept on going. And finally, in, the, in early in the morning, it stopped. And I said, oh, my God. And I was like, I'm going to work and I haven't slept or anything. I just went to work and and came back. And 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 it was a day or maybe a day or two. At the end. And then it's, oh, the pregnancy thing, you know, the pregnancy. What? About, and I, I could sense, I had a feeling that intuition that the, you should take another test. So I bought another test, took the test, not pregnant at all. That's insane. That's unbelievable. I cannot believe that. I mean, I believe it, but that's just evidence of this hybridization program. It sounds like they took your embryo. They did. Yeah, that's what I found out years later. I couldn't explain it right there and then. I also went to double check it with the doctors and they said, no, you're not pregnant anymore. So you can imagine uh, the process I had with that thing, with, with that experience like that. But I, I didn't know where to turn to, where to start to find out. So I kind of like just left it there in the back of my, you know, in my head somewhere. Just I couldn't explain it in any, you know, and I didn't, I didn't want to talk about it to anyone either because the experience was so intimate that uh, that was too much to talk about. Didn't know where to turn to and who to talk to. So I just left it in the back of my head. And years later, I started hearing about others who had been through that and what it was and what they, you know, what it was all about, learning more about it. So I said, oh, my God, did re this really happened to me. So that's what happened. Then I realized that. And I had to, after that, I also had some time to process that coming to terms with that as well. And then later on, I also had so much questions. Uh, I couldn't, I just couldn't leave it. This started, all these questions started coming up and that, that ended up in another experience. We're actually in a deep meditation. I, I've been meditating for years and years. I go, I go into deep meditation, almost trance. And I also have experience, experiences there in deep meditation as well. I had so many questions and in that, in that meditation, I was taking on board a ship and I was guided through these rooms. Uh, there was a tall being there next to me. He was guiding me through these rooms and I could see in these rooms on this big, I, I call it the big mothership because it was very big. And he was guiding me through this hall in this room and I could see on each side, there was these huge tubes filled with liquid. And it was tube after tube on both sides, sides in the room. And I was looking at it and I could see these embryos in different sizes. And I stopped and I asked this guide or this, this being who was with me, what's going on? What's this? And he said, I just wanted to show you what, what, what we are doing here and just explain to you what happened. And so you can, you know, get more insights on what's going on. And, and I said, well, okay, I, I just, Another puzzle, you know, pieces of the puzzle took place. And I thought of, I thought nothing of it. I said, okay, so that's what's going on. So you're doing this, yeah? And they told me about the hybridization program as well. And I was a part of it and that I agreed to it before I came here. And that I had uh, this, I had this hybrid of my own there somewhere. But I wasn't shown, I wasn't shown that, that, uh, child right there but I learned later many 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 years later I had a deep meditation and I just uh, just started uh, like, you know talking about it I get very emotional because I always felt I just have one son this lifetime I have just one son but I always knew that I have another child somewhere I, and I knew it was a girl but that was before I ever saw her through my deep meditation and that it was a girl. And yeah, it's kind of emotional when I talk about it. Still, I saw, they, I got to see her once and 
they told me that I will see her again. And when I saw her, I experienced her as a teenager. There were two large beings. They were like Nordic looking. I felt that they were Pleiadians. They had long blonde hair and blue eyes. And when they brought her forth, they kind of brought her between themselves. There were two beings and then she came in the middle and they kind of like pushed her in front of me. And they said, here she is. And she was beautiful. She had, it was weird because they were tall, um, blonde haired, and she was uh, a half a meter, no, shorter than them. And she had long, straight black hair and big, like brown, black eyes, like cat eyes, big eyes, and a little small mouth and just a little nose. And when she was smiling, I just lost it. I just completely lost it. And I just instantly knew that that there she is. And I said, oh my God, I knew I had another child somewhere else. And I knew that it was a girl because I never got a girl. I just, I have a, a son, but I had this feeling that I was having, I had a, you know, I had a, a daughter somewhere. And they brought it forth and she, she talked to me. She was so sweet. And the whole thing happened in telepathic communication. And it was so much feeling. And they emanated so much unconditional love, compassion, and so much kindness. And I had a completely meltdown. I just cried and cried. And I was doing this meditation with a friend of mine. And he was like guiding me through it all and asking me the right questions in the midst of the experience. So, uh, and he could, he witnessed the whole thing with me, the emotional reaction and the crying and, but it was, you know, tears of happiness, but also, you know, finally seeing your family, your daughter is, I can't explain it. You got to see your daughter. That's so special. I'm just sorry that you don't get to see her more often. Yeah, but it was the way they told me to not worry that I was going to see her later some time. That the way they told me that, the energy they brought into telling me that, I was reassured right there and then. I knew, okay, because I, I completely believe them. It's, they have a way of talking to you that completely convinces you. And the love and the compassion and, and the peace they come with, it's, you can't doubt that at all. So I, you know, it was okay. After they told me that, I was like, okay. I, I, felt, I, I, went, I felt the peace within that. I think that's so beautiful. You had an experience with Jesus and Mary. Would you mind sharing that with me? Sure, sure. Another profound and powerful experience. So we see how that goes because that also brings a lot of tears and emotional things up in me. So it was in the same apartment, the same bedroom, going to bed at, at night. And actually the same thing happens. You know, this, the energy coming into the room, you know, I think, oh, here we go again, uh, paralyzing my body, couldn't feel anything. Completely, completely awake and aware, only, you know, moving my eyes. And I knew, okay, something's going to happen tonight. And I was just lying there waiting. So I had my eyes to us. I had a door in front of me, which is a door into the, to, to the bedroom, was in front of me, sliding door. So the sliding door was slightly, I hadn't closed it completely because I had a cat then. She walked in and out of the room. So I had it open a little bit. So I started staring at the opening in the door. So what I can see there slowly something or someone materializing, materializing in the door. I could see it was a being. I couldn't see clearly who it was. I couldn't see any clearly face right there. I could see the clothing coming, being, you know, I could see it more and more how it looked like. So I could see it was a female for sure. I felt the female energy, powerful female energy. And I could see this cloth over her head, like going down all through her body. That was in a light color or light. Like it was like in black, black and white. I saw her, but I could see the light color of the clothing and, uh, and her wearing the dress she was wearing was a little bit darker. 
So I immediately, I'm not Christian, I'm, and I'm not connected to any religion or anything, but I, I just knew immediately that this is, this is Mary. This is Mother Mary. Of course, I, I just knew it. And she was just standing there. She didn't do anything. I couldn't see details in her face or anything. It's just, a, it's just this powerful, emanating, loving and unconditional loving energy emanating from her. So I just knew instantly that that's her. And I was, I was looking at her. At the same time, I could feel something happening next to my bed. I said, okay, something else is going on. And it was like a, a 15, like a half a meter from my my face next to my bed. I could see something materializing there. And I said, who's that? So I, I could just only, you know, put my eyes on it because I couldn't move my head. So my eyes goes to the side of the right side of my bed. And I could see something materializing that. And I could see that this is something else. Uh, I could felt a, I could feel a male energy. And then I slightly could see, starting to see some hair, like a little bit curly, a wavy hair. And he had also had some clothes, clothes on, but it was uh, like a lighter color. Because I could only see him from his, like a little bit above his chest and up, half of his body. It was like he was standing on his knee next to my bed. And I, he just slowly mater materialized and I said, oh my God. Is this who I think it is? Yeah, this is Jesus. I just knew instantly, this is Jesus. And the energy was even more powerful than what came from Mother Mary, because he was standing right next to me, and I could, see, and he materialized so clearly that I could see each detail in his face. I could see his half long, wavy hair, golden brown. He was slightly tanned. And he had a very nicely trimmed beard, you know, and his very nice uh, tanned uh, skin. And what stood out the most was his eyes. Oh my God, those eyes. I've never seen anything like it on this earth. And I don't think I ever will. These eyes were so beautiful. They were like golden brown. They were brown, but they were golden. So they kind of like shine. They were like a light in his eyes. I could clearly see they were golden. So I just call them golden brown. I can't explain, you, you, you know, those colors, you, you, we don't even have them here on earth, you know and what I mean? These are just, these are the colors that I've never seen before. So I was just so mesmerized about his eyes. So I was just looking into his eyes the whole time. And the love that emanated from him Oh my God, I start crying again, David. I'm sorry if I start crying again. But it's like, every time I tell that story, it's like it just happened. It's just, it just happened. And I was lying there and I felt like a little baby lying in a crib, you know, and that the, this father figure or this being so full of completely unconditional love looking at me and he slightly tilted his head on the side as you would if you look at your child in the crib or in the bed, you just look at your child and, and admire your child, right? With so much love. That's what I experienced he was doing. So I just felt, I could feel it. I felt like a little child looking in his eyes and admi admiring him. And he was admiring me through his eyes. And that love, I, I, uh, I, can, I can't explain the unconditional love he sent me through his eyes. Everything happened through his eyes. I've never felt that love ever on this earth with any being I ever have encountered. And I don't think I ever will feel that feeling or that love on this earth. I don't think so. I would probably experience that when maybe, I hope so, when I come to the spirit world. But I haven't experienced it here at all. And that was a profound experience and I... Each time I talk about it, it's, um, yeah. So he didn't say any words. It was just all expressed through his eyes. All feelings, emotional and all I can explain it with. Completely, completely. If, if you want to understand completely unconditional love, that's what I experienced. 
That's, that's the only thing I can say that maybe to explain it to you guys, what it felt like, but it was emanating through his eyes. And when he looked at me, he like pierced me with this, he pierced me with this unconditional love completely. I was completely lost. I was completely one when they had not love. I, was com- I felt like I was completely one with him as he was looking into my eyes and I was looking into his eyes. All, everything and all that exists, exists right there and then was this unconditional love. That's, that's all I can compare it to or explain it. What do you think his relationship is to these ETs? Or is there a relationship at all? I came to conclusions over the years because he's always been with me. He's still with me. Uh, I can sense him. Each time I talk about him and in this experience, he's in the room. That's probably why I get so emotional because I can sense his energy coming in. He's, he knows how emotional this is, so he's trying to help me with, with the emotions within the experience. But, you know... I started connecting because this happened when the all the other ET experiences as I had as well. So this happened, the experience with Jesus happened alongside the other experiences. So I kind of used, I kind of you know, started asking the questions of what is this? Why? And you know, I always ask questions about everything or with all spiritual, all the spiritual experiences I've ever had. I came to later that he must have something to do with these beings, if he's one of them, or he's working with them, both of it, or the one or the other, I don't know, but I for sure came to the conclusion for myself that he has something to do with that, absolutely. And I later found out, and I researched on the internet, I found out all paintings that pictured him talking to his disciples and with a UFO standing above them, shining the light. And there were so many, many, so I don't believe in any coincidences. I believe I was led to bit by bit to get my answers, those answers I was looking for, for myself. So I concluded with that, that he has something to do with that. He comes along with them, either he works with them or he's one of them. And he has, you know, come as a guide, you know, just like Buddha and all these other, you know, uh, guides and masters that have been visited Earth. I think they are being sent here from the stars, from, you know, to try to awaken us and try to ex- help us with expanding our consciousness, basically. So, yeah, I don't, I don't see Jesus as a separate religious being. Absolutely not. He is part of it. Absolutely. What do you think about these orbs that you see? Can you talk about that? Yeah. So I started many years ago, I started taking pictures outside because I felt that compelled to doing that and orbs starting showing up. I've been doing this for years and years. And I think I'm pretty much good at, you know, differ what is real orbs or entities or consciousness in orbs. Uh, to what is dust and other stuff, dust and water drops and stuff. Uh, these are just consciousnesses. These are, these are beings. You know, they are. They don't have to. They don't have to have bodies to come and visit us. So they've been visiting me in different colors. It's been in magenta, in purple, in blue, in golden. But recently or lately, the few, the late, latest years, I've been in contact with the blue ones. They show up. I can see them with my physical eyes. They just show up in the room, just dance around a little bit. Just maybe some, uh, uh, one day it can be just one, big one, floating around. I just recognize them and just say hello, you know, because I know there are uh, these beings. Again, they, I, I just call them the blue or the blue beings. And sometimes they come in clusters, several of them. It's like if you blow like soap bubbles, and you, you, you see them just floating around. That's how I see them with my physical eyes, moving around the house. And I can also see them around people. So are they like really bright, glowing balls of light? Absolutely. The, the color, the blue color, I, you know, we don't have that color here. But the only thing, 
I haven't seen it. I have nothing to compare with it. I can just say, oh, something like that blue. It's like a fluorizing blue. It's, it's really, mm, it's mixed between deep, deep, bright blue and turquoise. It's hard to, because it's alive, you know, it's hard to, it's not like a picture or a painting. It's alive. So it's, I have pictures of them. You've probably seen them on my picture. I can show you right here. I've taken pictures of them. I don't know if you can see them. It's a blue, I don't know. Yeah, there you go. See? So I asked them if they could show themselves to me because I think that they are so beautiful. If they could show themselves. So, so a couple of nights I, you know, kept on taking pictures in my bedroom. At night I have a modified camera and I have another camera as well. And I just started taking pictures and they started showing up. So that was, that was great. So the blue ones, but you see, these are paper. Uh, these are just, I have just, these are board papers, right? So the colors doesn't come through, you know, as well. But it's quite different when I see them physically with my eyes to towards pictures on the paper. So, yeah. And I also took a picture of this. You see that this is also, this is a blue craft, actually. I blew it up. So, yeah. I had this guy from the States. He contacted, contacted me, he saw that picture and said, can I analyze that picture for you? Because I think you got something there. And he did. And uh, I got some answer back and he said, what you have here, he said, you have taken a picture of actually a craft. So he, he, kind of, he, he looked at it because he was good at, you know, uh, how do you put it? He just researched the pictures and he went really deep into the picture to see that it wasn't any fake or anything. And he said that this is a real picture. And, and he said, you can even, when you blow it up, he said, you can even see the windows of the craft in the picture. And you can, I can't, you can't see it so clearly here, but I can see them. I can see the windows of the craft <laughs> alongside the craft there. And it was after I took that picture. And then when I moved from where I lived right there and to another place, I started seeing the blue ones, these blue herbs floating around. Yeah. Strange things happens. Do you think that they are going to make themselves known to the world? Yes, I do. It's just a matter of time. They're waiting for the masses to wake up a little bit more. So they're kind of actually uh, encouraging all what I would call the star seeds that are here with the message. They encourage them to come out more and more. And you see the work that you were doing, David, is very, very important for you laying a foundation for people uh, you know, like us to tell their stories because that's what they want. They want us to be part of, you might say, the disclosure movement for them. And, and they're waiting for enough of us to awaken to this truth about their existence and that they're here, they've been here visiting us many times from the time, from the beginning of time. So, yeah, this is just a part of the preparation, they told me. This is a preparation for a, a, a landing, some sort of landing physically, yeah where there's no more questions about what's going on. So yeah, it's gonna happen in the future. Did they give you any time frame? Is it gonna be in our lifetime that this happens? I have a feeling it will be in our lifetime, yeah. That we were having our first contact. They've been here and have had contact with a lot of people and especially indigenous people all around the world. But this will be another con contact scenario that will happen so the whole world will see it or experience it, if you know what I mean. There, there it will be no hidden agenda behind it at all. Absolutely not. And I feel it will have some coverage as well. And it will be, you know, there no, will be no doubt for anyone that say, well, you, they will show themselves for the masses, you might say. That's what they said for the masses yeah when but they will do it when it's safe to do so they they're actually waiting a little bit now to see how we're developing in our consciousness our spiritual awakening to a more har harmonious and peaceful mindset 
you know, so they don't, they are still uh, see the, the, the like, you know, observing us how we are uh, um, evolving. And they want us to evolve into this peacefulness and this harmonious beings as we, you know, they want us to be peaceful and harmonious, actually. So they say when the masses are there, when they have found the peace and the harmony in themselves and, you know, the love, and they actually live it, you know, they will they will start you know preparing for for uh, contacting us. Did they give you any specific message that they want you to share with the world? They told me long ago already that we should be aware of what the governments or the leaders of the world are doing. We need to know what's actually going on. We need to inform ourselves and not to trust. The, the, the old governments and the, the way the governments and the politicians are today, because there's been an agenda there that is not in our best interest, and they want us to be aware of that. And they said because of that, it's caused a lot of havoc and a lot of um, suffering to our world, amongst us as humans, also amongst nature, Mother Earth, you know, and, and animals and everything, and they don't... They say that this is not the way they wanted us to live. This is not the way we were supposed to start our civilization here on Earth. But it was like we were hijacked by something that wanted something else that didn't actually care so much about us. And we need to realize that. And when we have informed ourselves about that, we get more information. We get more you know, powerful with that. And we will then stop consensing in what is going on. We will end up not cooperating with how everything, the system and the governments are working today. More and more of us are waking up and there will be less and less cooperation. And as we do that, uh, with the help from them, uh, we will understand what is going on and we will we will hopefully they say choose the line that choose the timeline where we will live in a harmonious and peaceful way with everything that exists well at the same time there will be some of us that will choose the other timeline that will continue to choose the negativity and the darkness and all that you know that that leads to but it's like it, 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 it kind of like we will, so we have to, we have a choice to make. They basically say we have to make the choice within our hearts and our minds. What kind of future and what kind of world do we want to have? Because we are the creators of all things. So they, they, they ask us to be very aware where we put our energy and what we choose and how, what we are, what we can visualize as our future. That is basically what we will have. What we can manage to do there, to materialize, to visualize, with the beautiful power each and every one of us have inside. And together, we need to come together. They say also we have been so separated, so separated for such a long time. Now it's time to come together, you know, as a, a, a people, all of us. We need to come together and create this new future in harmony and peace and in unconditional love for all that is. And um, that's if that's what we choose to, to go down that timeline, that's what's going to happen. So they're basically not here to save us. They are not here to save us and do the work for us. Absolutely not. They are guiding us, hopefully, to make the right choices for our future. Thank you so much, Tatiana, for spending time with me today and sharing your beautiful stories. Do you have anything that you would like to share in closing, a website, or any final words? Yes, I have a, a website. You probably put some links on your, you know, on the on the video as well. But it's etcn.no, and uh, and I'm open to anyone who wants to contact me and ask questions or. 
if there's anything I can do for for you or for them. Um, so I'm I'm there on my website and I'm also on Instagram and I'm on Facebook Messenger. I also have my own YouTube channel, even though I haven't been that active there. Uh, and I'm also on TikTok. So I'm using these channels to try to, you know, in, to inspire for growth and expansion of consciousness. So I would be happy if you can just contact me and I will be happy to answer and help the, the best way I can. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thanks again. And have a beautiful day, Tatiana. Thank you, David. And thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure and a joy. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Your support means the world to me. And I will see you in the next video.